So just a little quick update here. Y'all see not much is going on. We have uh, moved to set locations again. This is where we were at yesterday afternoons. We've actually moved the loader twice since the last time you've seen anything. Uh, that's the old loader. This is Mickey's loader. This little patch that we're working here, it is a second thin. There was 12 acres of it all together. Might have been three, four acres, something like that. Maybe five acres over on this side road. We finished that up real early this morning. We've been working over here. Uh, extremely wet. I had to take the track cutter over. Matt don't have the experience to cut in the wet ground like I do. So, I've been cutting all morning on it, but before I took it over, the rail that we had repaired the other day has started, I don't know what it's doing. It won't tighten up, and it's stretching really fast. So, John Deere is here taking care of that. Matt is on the rubber tire cutter. I found a hill for it to cut on, so maybe we can try and get a, another load out today. And, uh... Things are just bad, bad slow. So we're gonna walk down here, we're gonna check on the track cutter, see where he's coming at. They, I know they are cutting the link out of the rail and uh, we're gonna do what they call short tracking it. So, not sure when y'all gonna get to see this, but we're gonna, maybe a couple days from now. So anyway, let's go see what they got going on over here. So she's all tore apart. Looks like he's done got the link cut out. Yep. There's the old part of the link laying right there. She's wounded right now, fella. She's got her legs cut out from underneath her. This is one of the moments where it's like, but you ain't got no legs, Lieutenant Diane. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just pretty well hanging out and we know Matt to get a little bit cut before we go down there pressuring him, seeing what the ground's gonna do. Must be doing pretty good because he ain't coming up here screaming, going, Oh, it's wet! Uh, oh, I'm sorry, we're spending quality time. <laughs> we're getting paid for it, so. <laughs> anyway, he we starts doing. Huh? Pizza party? That's why that belly oh, his is fat. <laughs> anyway, he starts doing something else over here in a minute. Sparks start flying or something. I'll show y'all what we got going on. It's just, it's neat. Huh? We don't need it on fire. Hell, yeah, it's raining too much. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so what he was doing, he welding right there. You see inside the the link. He slipped on the track pad while he was cutting and notched the link. He was having to patch his hole up. But somebody was asking the other day about wear on the tracks. Make sure this ain't too hot. But how do I, how do I, yeah, put that in there and work out, Brady. How do we know when the tracks are wore out? Y'all see how that's slopping side to side and front to back? That's how we're kind of measuring wear on the, the tracks. I'm sorry, I got Brady's hands dirty. <laughs> But anyway, that's how we kind of measure the the, slack, the the wear on the tracks is by that kind of slack. Now this one, that side to side that it had in it, that wouldn't be there had the machine been sold to us like we asked with tri-rail on it. If you're going to buy a track machine, I don't care if you're putting it in hills, flat ground, swamps, I don't care what you're doing with the application. If you have 36 inch pads most especially 36 inch pads put tri-rail on the machine tri-rail extends the life of your machine by tenfold just to give y'all an example we usually see 4500 
or so hours, 4,000 to 4,500 on a set of original rails on the machine, factory rails as we call them, with tri-rail on the Tiger Cat stuff. This one has 3,300 hours without tri-rail. If it would have tri-rail on it, this thing would probably get 5,000 hours out of a set of rails. So what he's doing now is he's going to rig this uh, strap up, go through the links. He's got his crane run out. And he's going to be picking that up. Start buttoning it all back together. Y'all hang tight. We'll be back in a minute. I'm getting ready to button it up, putting the pin in the, in the press, getting it all rolled back. He's got a. You actually put the pin in the hole there, and he's got like a dummy pin. Y'all see that yellow looking pin inside the the rail? He's got his hydraulic pump. They're going to line the pin up and they're going to get it started and then he'll start pumping and he'll shove it right on through there. Here in a minute they'll shoot that pin out and hit that track over there. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of drove through just to be on the safe side we're going to put a, a pass and weld around the pin to help uh, keep it in place enough <laughs> so it's Friday now and uh, as y'all can see we're back in first thinning we've been saving this hill for a few days now I'm going to what well, what we're doing and I'll show y'all on the map later but we're starting this one patch we're going to be crossing the SMZ in two places 
to get across or to access to uh, these two bigger patches of timber. I said, there's 15 acres right here beside the road. And this will get us through whatever rain may be coming tomorrow. So it's supposed to rain again tomorrow. And after tomorrow, we should be done for, I think they're saying the next Wednesday, Thursday on the rain. So this is one of those spots here that the underbrush isn't as bad as what we're accustomed to cutting in. So I'm going to be able to get lots of footage of the cutters working. And that's going to be kind of my goal here. Is we're going to focus on the cutters. When we get to a spot where I can video the cutters working, that, that's that's going to be my goal is to get the, get the cutters. Because the loaders and the skidders are easy all the time. It's hard to get good at in woods footage of the cutters but anyway y'all got to watch us working on the track again yesterday on the 853 they're back again this morning I had a, a GPS antenna mess up for my JD link and timbermatic maps so they're here fixing that antenna and they're shortening the track on the other side and I'll talk about all that a little bit later kind of give y'all an in-depth on that but so yeah we're just getting things started at you know, the new spot we're fixing to put Mickey in the set we're gonna be using the chambers delimiter here we're gonna talk about the chambers a little bit there's gonna be a lot of good stuff coming right here we're fixing like I said we're fixing to put the loaders in and we're gonna set the box up and I'm gonna get I'm gonna try and get real close to show y'all how we push the pile of dirt and how we set that box and and everything like that so just logging baby we're just logging we're trying to survive it's wet we've been hanging on to this hill for a while i got two more hills i'm hanging on to so y'all hang tight we'll be back in a minute y'all know me it ain't never nothing dull All right, so I'm going to show you, kind of explain to y'all as we're doing this, kind of what what we're doing and everything else. What, what he's doing is he's getting his dirt pile built for the deliminator. Sometimes I build my pile with the track shear. Sometimes I build it with, with this. Traditional way is building it with this. Whatever you do, if you have a deliminator or you don't have a deliminator and you're looking at getting one, do not ever push your pile of dirt from over here where that thing's going to sit at. So whenever you push that pile of dirt from over there, your delimiter is setting down. It's going down on the ground. And it makes that thing stop up three times as fast. But Mickey had to get up there and tell him. I assume that's what you went and told him push that stuff down behind him and then we we cut our sets what I call cut the fit we'll get it big enough to get a loader and everything in here and then we will cut the set out to fit what we have in here but you just got to get your skitter to get back there a good ways and just start shaving off from a long distance. Like that one stump just rolled up in it. That's okay, but the game plan is to not have any stumps in your pile. Shorter timber, you're going to want your pile, you know, about even with that, your leg right there. Longer timber, you're going to want it about halfway in between your leg and your, your delimmer out there. This is pretty short stuff, so we're going to set the limmer kind of close to him. This is a good sandy ground I've been saving. Good clay underneath it, too. We ought to be able to work this rain or shine. That's something else. That's the difference in working and not working when it comes to wintertime is getting off your butt and getting out in the woods and walking this mess with a stick and finding what ground you know will work what won't work can't tell you how many loggers they just 
Forster says it'll work, and they move them there, and then it don't work. And then they spend all them thousands of dollars on moving, and they keep shoving it closer and closer to you. Got Matthew over there on the rubber tire. He keeps hitting the stump right there. If he'd back up and just shove that stump, and get it out of his way, it wouldn't be bothering him as bad. But when you also dig your pile from back there like that, it's letting that stuff coming out of that box. It has a, a deeper area for it to fall into, so you skitter can keep this kind of more clean right here. He can keep that area more clean, and then it it won't uh, uh it, it helps the the D limber exhaust easier. That stuff wet and sticking to his blade. Y'all see, it's good, good clay up underneath there. It won't come off there. All right, now he's going to come around to this side. He's going to get on that end of the pile. He's going to shove it up, kind of hump it up. Right. Got Mickey over here playing traffic director. He's not digging the ground where the tires are going to go. He's just scooping up the dirt that he already has there and just putting it in a taller pile. And you want that pile as tall as possible. You want that back bumper to just about be touching the ground whenever you put it on there. I've showed this a few times before, but what you want to do is you're going to be backing this thing in with the skitter, and you're going to get your tires run just up on the edge of that pile of dirt like he's doing, and then when he gets his back tires where he wants it to sit, he's just going to jackknife that baby doll around. You see how it's up on the big lane there up there talking on the CBs to each other. CBs are a huge communication factor out here in the woods. Man, that thing set perfect. Perfect. Very rarely do you get to set like that that good on the first shot. So what you've done here is you got the dirt pile, and I'm not sure if y'all can really tell, but it's leaning you know this way a little bit. So, what that does is that lets Mickey not have to dip his boom down to get in the box. He can just go in at an angle right here. He just goes in, and then, whoop, he can just come back up, and he don't got to worry about it. I mean, it's a little bit close, but this is short, short wood, so you need it. And the limbs, I don't know if y'all can really tell, the limbs are, like, to the ground. So, he's going to have to back that stuff all the way back up in the dilemma as best he can. And then... Yeah. Do it right the first time, you ain't got to do it the second time. That's 
All right, we've been going to watch him put the first bucket through the box. Looks like he's going to shift some of that wood over. You see, we have to cut our tops off, so he's got to put it in his topping saw, buzz the tops out of it. And then run her through the box. He has a button on his controller in there that goes to a remote control. That is tied to the, the computer in the box. Well, every time he goes to go towards the, the chambers, he hits this button on the side of his stick. It's, a, it's something that we've added to his controller in the, in the loader. And every time he goes to go towards it, he just hits that button and it gives him 20 seconds. It idles the machine up at full RPM. Well, actually, it don't go to full RPM. You can go out there and manually idle it up to like 2,450 RPMs. But whenever he idles it up with the button, it only goes to like 1,800 or 1,850. If we get in some really bad stuff or my chains go to getting short, and the D limbers having a hard time knocking limbs. I mean, y'all see how quick that knocks the limbs off. Uh, we'll we'll go out there and idle the the D limber up till we get through the bad patch. We'll we won't go full wide open. We'll put it on about 2,200, and that makes a world of difference of how well it knocks the limbs off of that mess. But anyway, every time he bumps that button, he's got 20 seconds to get his wood in the box and out of the box and then it don't idle up again until the next bucket of wood goes towards it and he hits his button again so very simple all right so we're gonna head over here and look at this this is uh 718 dueled out first thinning and it is actually thinning he screwed that tree up, but. I had a couple people ask, you know, how much thinner would you have to go doing first thinning like this? Really none at all. I mean, we're still hitting our 70 basal area. He's pretty well got everything thin. I'm fixing to show him how to cut a access road. And if y'all see Mickey setting up here, day lemon, and this row runs right down beside the road. This gonna run right into his loader there. So what he's having to do, would have to do, is Michael had to pull it in there and he had to like Jew it all around, you know, and it don't it don't G haul real well that way. So what I'll do is I'll get Matt to build a 45 degree access from that row to this row, and then Michael he's sitting down there waiting. He'll take this wood and he'll go right through here.
That's pretty neat, wasn't it? Might have to take those trees back over yonder. Lay them down in that row. Mike will be coming up through here shortly with his drag. The sounds these trees make when you're fooling with them. It's, so, it's totally different in person, too. You can hear it pretty good on camera, but it is totally different in person. I'm waiting on Matt to get out of his way. So, you know, what Michael will do is he'll go up there, loop around. Nose up in this row here. Well, he's going to go just just past Mickey. Set his top, set his drag down. And then he should just pull up behind the loader and back right back down here to us. Just that easy. And he's going to grab that one pile. And I'll show you. That'll be a good way to explain to y'all what I was just talking about a minute ago. Of having to you know maneuver that stuff around so you'd have to pull up there and then back up like that and set that wood down and that's cool and everything but you'd have to cut all this set out bigger in the end you'd have to cut let's see this tree those two trees that one tree there and that would probably have got it and you'd probably come out to the same timber that was cut to make the access row over here but it doesn't look like you cut a five acre set out by doing this. This makes your track of timber look more aesthetically pleasing to the eye whenever you drive by. It don't look like somebody's been out here just raping the timber, so to speak. You'd have had to cut the same amount of timber to make the thing work one way or the other. But this way right here looks neater. It looks more professional. That's a bad machine right there, y'all. This is a, a y'all heard me say a back, backward set. Backward set means instead of loading your trucks from your left side, like we normally like to do normally we load our trucks from this side over here you know your truck would be sitting right here in the road and you load swinging your wood that way that's what we call a frontwards facing set when you're in a backwards set you have to load your wood this way you, you would have to be coming in between the loaders big no-no on my job I don't care how you, if anybody else is watching this that runs their own job I don't care how you do yours we do not swing the wood over the top of the second loader. You watch Brady here. Brady's the one running the, the second loader. You see how he picks it up really carefully, make sure his top's clear the other loader, then he spins it around. But this mess is so short, you can just grab it like that and pick it up. So Mickey's doing nothing but delimbing. The chambers does nothing. He sits out there with the chambers and does nothing but delim all day. Looks like we got fuel filters maybe stopping up. Hey, we got fuel filters stopping up on the chambers or the chambers, the the spot where it deliums at in there is stopped up, it's clogging the machine up. This mess here, you have to take the trash out like every drag. Or else it'll clog up and you can't either you can't get the wood in there or it won't let the machine exhaust and uh, clean the the trash out the back of it and then it it builds up around that bottom drum and it will uh, bog the machine down like that 
But anyway, Mickey sits up there and he's just going to deal him all day long. Brady's our truck loader. This is some bad stuff. Uh, this, this is kind of why I try and keep a, a solid four-man crew and then I'm the fifth man that hops around. Normally right now I would be on the rubber tire cutter cutting down rows ahead of Matt. Michael's going to be skidding pretty well everything by himself because he's going to one skitter in this kind of ground and this kind of timber. He's going to keep the, the loader is busy and he's going to stay on top of the cutters. This is some bad stuff. I ain't looked at the year on it, but I'd say this is like 11. This is 11 or 12 year old stuff. Up on top of the hill is actually pretty good. It just did not grow towards the bottom of the hill. But when we're set up like this, Brady is set up here and he'll move wood out of Mickey's way. Mickey just kind of drops it there in the middle like y'all just saw him doing and Brady just kind of picks it up. He tries and keeps him a little pile right here going. That way it uh, he has something to, to pick up and because we're going to load this butts backwards on the back. We'll put about 35,000 pounds of wood or so on the back of the trailer and then with the butts facing out the back instead of the tops facing out of the back. Then we'll put a cross piece and then we'll load the front with the butts facing forward. Some people call it invert loading and stuff. I call it butts out the back. It's, it's backwards loading. <laughs> so. But there ain't no way you'd be processing. You know, we'll, we'll still probably do our 10 or 12 in this. We'll do 10 really easy. Most days we'll do 12 when I get the other cutter back going because that's why I'm not on the rubber tire right now. Matt is running the rubber tire while they're working on his track down there. I'm fixing to go down there and check on that guy. See where we're at on that progress. But So yeah, we got the we got everything set up. We're rolling. We're done loaded. One, two. I think the third load should be coming in. But there ain't no way you'd be doing 10 loads a day with one loader without a CT, I mean, without a deliminator in this. This is the kind of wood that deliminator sets around for all year long. So when we do get in this kind of bind or this kind of mess, see, we can take this bad wood and continue working where and, and still make our notes and, and everything else. Whereas a crew that don't have one of these deliminators they're gonna struggle they're gonna struggle to to make you know ends meet they're not gonna be able to work this this bad wood and still still make you notes and stuff so that's why we have the chambers we break her out for the hard times so anyway, I just figured I'd jump in here and show y'all our second, or our two loader setup, and how we know how we work it. This is how we do ours. A lot of people run two loaders; they set them up different, and all this other goofy mess. This is the most efficient way you can set two loaders up with the chambers. Anybody wants to argue me, come talk to me, because uh, this kind of wood right here, our big job. We'll run 100 loads a week still out of this kind of timber. 80 for sure. 100 if we work six days. And that's on a 31 to almost 32 ton average of load. I've seen these things set up so many different wonky ways. This is, this is by far the best. We've tried every way you can imagine to stick it out there. It just, till you get them set up like this, it, it don't really matter. It just ain't gonna work the same. So anyway, I'm gonna go down there and check on my mechanic, see where he's at on my, my track machine. And uh, 
Yeah, it's time for get the track machine out here. We'll be back. All right, we're getting down to the end of the day here, guys. We're going to finish this video out watching Matthew. And the 853. We got it back going. This is the first row he's got to cut with it since. I know he's just uh, tickled paint because that rubber tire was about to beat him smooth to death. I think he's waving at y'all. I know you can't see that, but I think he's waving at y'all. If he'd pick that head up just a little bit, he'd give y'all some good. There you go, saw spray action. Anyway, guys, we appreciate everybody again. Hope y'all enjoyed this one. This one should have like lots of different content for y'all. Here we go. Here we go. Oh! Watch, he's gonna get this one right here. Here, I'll zoom in for y'all. <laughs> we just got hit with chips. All right, anyway, y'all, we're going to wrap the day up. Look, we got this going on. We're loading trucks. It's next to last load. We're going to end up 48 loads this week. We're going to call it a week. We're going to come back Monday. Listen to that saw scream. 1,250 RPMs. Anyway. We're done. We're out for the week. Y'all uh, come back. I've got something cool coming up. We're probably going to post that on Sunday. I'll be watching this on Saturday. So Y'all come back tomorrow and i got something cool lined out. And then who knows what else we're going to have. But i got lots of stuff filmed up. And uh, yeah. Y'all just keep coming back. Until the next video. He's in there playing with that dang computer. I'm going to take his computer out of there, Mickey. Ain't getting no production done. He's playing with the computer. We're out here, y'all. We'll catch y'all next time.